Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate three different seaming techniques. I'm going to demonstrate seaming stitches to stitches, rows to rows, and stitches to rows. So stay with me and I'll show you how to do those things. In the meantime give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed already. Okay, so let's get started. You can see here I have two of the little swatches that I'm going to be using in blocking still. So this is how I block them. If I'm going to be seaming edges, I tend to block the fabric with the wrong side up and I make sure that when I'm pinning the edges out that I have all of the stitches facing out. So that all of the wrong side stitches are facing up and that the edges are not curling and this just makes it so much easier to seam. So, I'm just... so you can see my little swatches here. I have four all together and the edges are all blocked out so that I can seam them very easily. So we're going to start with these two right here and also notice that I don't have the ends woven in. I usually weave the ends in after I'm finished seaming so that I don't accidentally seam them into an area, that I don't weave them into an area where I might be seaming later on. It makes the seam um, thick that way, so I try to avoid that. So I'm going to use a contrasting color yarn to do the seaming, and I'm going to start out by working, um, I'm going to seam stitches to stitches. Now you notice that I have these swatches. I have the cast on edge here, the bind off edge here, cast on, bind off. You could just as well put the bind off edges together. And in most time, most uh, instances, that's probably what you're gonna be doing, like a shoulder seam or something like that. But since I'm gonna be making this little sampler swatch, I want all of my bind offs to be at the top because later on, I'm gonna be seaming stitches to rows here and I want all my stitches lined up across the top. So I'm going to start out by seaming the uh, bind off edge to the cast on edge. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And what we're going to be looking for here is we want to continue the design of the stitches going across the seam. For example, we can see <clears throat> this column of V's coming up right here. We want it to connect with a column of V's going this way. We don't want it to connect with the down pointing V's. And the way that we do that is we're just going to start coming up in a stitch on the lower swatch. We're going to be going up in a stitch, then down under these two legs that are pointing to the seam. They make a V that points to the seam. Then we'll seam over here. We'll come down here and go under these two legs. So these two legs point to the seam. So when you pull your yarn through those two, it pulls them together into a pointy V. If you accidentally instead go under a stitch, the right leg and the left leg of the same stitch, when you pull your yarn through and you pull it up, it pinches that V together. And that's called the dreaded 11s. We do not want dreaded 11s across our seam. So you are going to go under the left leg of one stitch and the right leg of the next stitch. That's on the bottom swatch. <laughs> on the top swatch, you're going to go under the stitch because when you do that, both legs of the stitch come down and create the V. So it makes a V. If perchance you went under these two legs and then bring your yarn down, guess what you get? You get the dreaded 11s. So we're going to work this without <clears throat> making the dreaded 11s. So I'm going to come up in the middle of the salvage stitch. I'm leaving a little tail and I'm going to go under the two legs of this salvage stitch right here, both legs. Then I'm going to come down here to the bottom swatch. I'm going to go under 
the left leg of the first stitch, the selvage stitch, and the right leg of the neighboring stitch. I'm going to go up here and go under these two legs of this stitch. And don't seam, <clears throat> don't seam through your seaming thread. Be careful that you don't seam <clears throat> through your seaming thread. So I'm going to just continue like this. Now you can see <clears throat> right away that we have this column of V's coming up here and our seaming thread is making a V and it's continuing across the seam. So I'm just going to continue across. I'm close. <clears throat> I'm close to the end of this. I'm going to go under the next to the last stitch here. Going under here. Then we're going to go under the selvage stitch, which is here. And then we're going to go down through the center of this selvage stitch, and that will be the end. So we can see that our seaming thread makes it look like the knitting just continues across the seam. And you can leave it like this if you want. What is going to constrict the stretchiness is the bind off on the one edge and the cast on on the other edge. So this fabric will only stretch as wide as the cast on and the bind off allow it. But you can also pull this tight. And so watch what happens when I pull each end of the seaming thread. Now you can't see the seaming thread at all, but you do see that the columns of the V's still travel across the seam perfectly. There are no dreaded 11's. And you can't see the seaming yarn. Now if we look at the other side, we can see if we pull it apart, pull the stitches apart, we can see the seaming yarn down inside. And we can see it on the other side as well. If we pull the work apart a little bit, you can see that yellow seaming thread. Okay, so now what we have done is we have seamed the bind off on this swatch to the cast on edge of this swatch. So now we have a bigger swatch. And remember, we started out with the cast on, work 14 rows, bind off, cast on, work 14 rows, bind off. So what we consumed was the bind off and the cast on. So now what we have is the cast on, 28 rows, and the bind off. And so that's going to match this swatch right here. Here we have the cast on, we worked 28 rows, and then we bound off. So now we're going to seam stitch rows to rows. Here we seamed stitches to stitches. Now we're going to seam rows to rows, and this is called a mattress stitch. So let me thread my needle, and we'll get going on the mattress stitch. Notice up here, too, we did not secure either end of this. We, just, we left it open so we could adjust the seam. Once you're finished, then you can weave these ends in. And I weave the ends in the very last thing. So I'm going to magnify this and show you how to do the figure eight start for mattress stitch. We have our selvage edge right here and we have a selvage edge here. We're going to be seaming between the selvage stitch and the first column in on both sides. So we're gonna be seaming right in here and right in here. So this stitch will end up being adjacent to this stitch. So we're gonna start, you can start on either side, it doesn't matter, I'm going to come directly up from back to front between the selvage stitch and the first stitch. There's the selvage stitch as close to the cast on as I can. And I'm leaving a tail. 
Here's my tail. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to come as close to the cast on edge as I can between the selvage stitch and the first column in. From back to front. Both sides were worked from back to front. Now I'm going to come to the first side and I'm going to come up in that exact same spot back to front between the selvage stitch and the first column in, being very careful to not seam through my seaming yarn. Now if you turn this on the side and look at it, you see there's the figure eight. Okay, so we have just finished working on the left piece. Now we're going to go to the right piece. And we're going to go down in the same place where we previously came up, and we're going to go under one bar. That bar is the strand between this stitch and the selvage stitch. So we're going under one bar. Then we're going to go to this piece, and we're going to go down in the same place where we came up previously, being careful to not split the seaming yarn. We're going to go under one bar. That's the strand between this stitch and the selvage stitch. Now oftentimes you'll see people talk about going under two bars at a time. Um, I think it's a time saver, but it doesn't necessarily make your work look good. I go one bar at a time and my work looks really good. Then I'm going to come go down in the same place where I came up. I find the next bar. It's right here. I'm going under that bar. I'm going to come over here, go down where I came up in the same spot. So each hole is used twice. Go under the next bar. I'm going to continue doing this up until I get to this seam, and then I'll stop and we'll take a look at this, okay? Okay, so at this point I've worked um, quite a few stitches up the side. You can see I used each hole twice between the bars and now I'm going to zipper this up and I call it zippering because it, it feels like you're pulling a zipper close. So I'm going to hold the figure eight down here with this hand. In fact, let me shrink this a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to hold the figure eight yarn here with this hand. I'm going to take this yarn up here and I'm just going to pull and watch what happens. You see how it just pulled up? And it's virtually invisible. The figure eight down here, what that does is it creates a perfect line once this tail is woven in here across the bottom. The, there will be no jog here. You can see a little bit of my yellow yarn there from the figure eight, but if you were using the same color just look up close. You would not see it. So it creates this smooth edge across here without a jog. Now, you don't want to pull it so tight that there's no stretch. You still want some stretch. So this end, the figure eight, creates a secure end. It won't move, but at this point you can still open this seam up a little bit by just stretching it away from the figure eight so you can get a little bit of give in the fabric. It is possible to pull it too tight, but what you want is the end result. You want to see this column of stitches right here. This column was on the right piece, and this column is on the left piece, and they are now joined together. Even if I pull them apart, they look really good. You can see little smidgens of the yellow yarn in there, but it looks just like the rest of the knitting. If we look at the other side, we can see our yellow yarn there, and actually we see a couple places where it's a little bit loose. So I'm going to actually pull that up a little bit more. To get rid of those big spots. And let's look at the other side. 
looks good. Now, your biggest concern in doing this, as I mentioned before, is you don't ever seam through your seaming thread because it will not zipper up like that. You'll catch it, it'll catch on your seaming thread and you'll be stuck and you'll end up having to cut it out. It won't pull out. At this point, the um, yarn will come out very easily. All you have to do is undo the figure eight and the whole thing will just slide out and you can start over. At, right, and I'll show you that in the end. I'll pull the yarn out and show you how to do that. So here we are, we're coming up on this seamed edge and what we're going to do, we're not going to catch the seam. We're gonna go ab above it and below it. So our last stitch was over here on the left side. We're gonna to need to go over to the right side we're going to go right here. This is the next bar up, right here. Let's make sure there's, yep, that's it. Then we're going to go under a bar here. Now we're coming very close on that seam. There's one more bar below it. We're going to go under that bar. Now we're going to move across the seam and pick up the first bar on the other side. This is so that we don't end up with extra stitches on one side. We have, we've worked these swatches so that we have the same number of rows on each piece. And when I'm knitting a garment, I do that. I, you know, oftentimes uh, the direction will say work for 14 inches, you know, the side on the back and 14 inches on the side on the front, and then you're going to seam them together. I actually count my rows. I do count my rows because when I'm seaming, I like them to match up. But let's say that you have more rows on one side than the other. You can fudge a little bit. Knitting is very forgiving. You can actually go under two bars on one side and one bar here, one bar, one bar, and every once in a while go under two so that you kind of ease one fabric into the other. It is okay to do that. It's better to do that than to seam up all the way to the end and find out that you have an inch of fabric left on one side and nothing left on the other side. But I count rows to begin with and then I rarely have that problem unless I miscounted. As you get up towards close coming up to the end, double check how many rows you have left on each side. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm good, but do that every once in a while. Stop and count so that you make sure it's gonna turn out okay. I'm just seaming one bar on each side all the way up. When I'm doing this, I'm actually looking through my camera while I'm seaming. So it only gives me a two-dimensional. But I've done this so much, I'm pretty good at it. But in the beginning, when I first started making my videos, it was really hard. Okay, we're coming up to the top now. So I have one bar left here and one bar left here. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm gonna pull them up tight again. I love doing this part, it's so fun. It's very rewarding, very satisfying. That looks pretty darn good. Now once you're at the top, you're going to uh, finish off the top. Our last bar was on the right piece, so we're going to take our needle and go under the bind off of the selvage stitch right here, not over here, but right here, the selvage column. We're going to go under that bind off to the back and come over to the bind off on this side under the selvage stitch and go from front to back. And this, what this does is it lines up the top, just like we lined up the bottom. 
we end up with no jog once the tails are woven in and it looks very good. So that is the mattress stitch. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this swatch across the top and what we're going to be doing is seaming stitches to rows. So let me get ready for that. Okay, so before we can seam the stitches to the rows, we need to do a little bit of calculations. In these swatches, I am getting five stitches to the inch and seven rows to the inch. So I know that five stitches for an inch and seven rows for an inch are equivalent to each other. So what I need to do is create a ratio of seven to five. And let me show you how I do that. Okay, so let's pretend that this is our seam. And this is an inch here, and this is an inch here. So an inch and an inch. And down here we have five stitches, and five stitches here. And we need to connect them to seven rows up here. So up here we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how are we going to do that? What I do is I connect two stitches, a stitch, a stitch to a row, a stitch to a row. Then this stitch is going to connect to this row. In other words, we're skipping a row. This stitch is going to connect to this row, and this one's going to connect to this row. So we have two, one, three, one. Down here we've used all the stitches, and we've used, which is five. Up here we've used five rows. Two rows were not used, and they're evenly distributed. You do the same thing here, and you have to do this calculation before you start. So I know that I'm going to seam a row to a row, skip a row. Seam a row, 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 skip a row. Row, row, skip a row, 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 skip a row. Uses all my stitches, and it will make sure that the inch of rows is equal to the inch of stitches. So let's try that, okay? We're going to start out here. Now, if you were doing this, let's say you were connecting a, the shoulder seam to a sleeve cap, you would start in the middle and work this way, come back to the middle and work this way. But we're not, we're just practicing um, on our swatches. So we're going to start down here in our salvage stitch. Let me make this big. Come up in the middle of the salvage stitch. It's going to do the same technique that we used down here for the row, the stitches down here. We're going to use the same technique we used here. And then we're going to go under the first bar between the salvage stitch and the first stitch in the first column, and we're going under that bar. Then we're going to come down and go under this leg and this leg. So we're not making the dreaded 11. Then we're going to go under the second bar. Right here. Then we're going to come down and remember we're going to use, be using all the stitches down here. So we're coming down. And then up here, we're going to skip this bar and go under this bar. Now you can either, I'll show you a second way over on the other half. Remember we're using all of the stitches, so those are the same. So now we've had one bar, two bars, three bars. So now we've done one inch. We're going to come down here, use the next left leg and right leg. Now we're going to go up here, we're going to skip a bar. Now, you can skip a bar by either going over it or you can go under two bars at a time. It doesn't matter, you can do it either way. I'm going to do it the other way on the other half when we get to the middle point. They give you the exact same results. So if you see somebody show it 
That way it's also correct. Now I talked before, while I'm, while I'm seaming, I'll talk about this, the mattress stitch. A lot of times in pattern directions where people choose to um, slip their selvage stitch. I don't ever slip the selvage stitch because if you're going to be seaming, I don't slip the selvage stitch when I'm going to be seaming or picking up stitches because it gives you a reduced opportunity for seaming. You can only seam every other row and you can only pick up stitches every other row. So I don't use that method. I don't slip the edge stitches. Now we're coming up. That's the one, two, three. So we've done the first half. And you can see where we skipped a stitch here, we've skipped a stitch here, and over here. So at this point, I'm going to pull this tight and see what it looks like. Again, you have to be very careful to not seam through your seaming thread. And it looks good. Looks very, very nice. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to work this one the way I said of going under two stitches. So we just finished on the top piece, so we're going to come down and go under this stitch on one side of the seam and this leg on the other side of the seam. We're going to go under one bar, go under these two legs. Now, instead of going under one bar and then skipping the next bar, I'm just going to go under two bars. That's equivalent to going under one bar and skipping the next bar. And we'll go under one, two, and then the third one, we're going to go under two bars because that's equivalent to skipping the next bar. And then one. Two. And this is the same as sk skipping that we're going to go under two. It's the same ratio. One. Two. Go over one and skip bar. And we're going to go under our last selvage stitch and we're going to go under through here and pull this up now notice on we didn't um tighten we didn't fasten down either end on this seam either you don't want to because you oftentimes need to adjust this. And if you fasten down the ends, you can't adjust it. So there we have, let's get bigger. Here we have our seaming sample swatch. At this point, I would steam, <clears throat> I would steam the seams and they'll lay nice and flat. So earlier I told you that I would sh also show you how I pull out the seaming threads. So let's pull this one out first. So you're just going to pull it out and if you haven't seamed through the seaming thread they should just come apart very easily. On this one because we fastened off the top we have to undo that. And we have to undo the figure eight. Once you've done that, then again, you're just going to pull the strand out and the pieces come apart. On this one, also, we did not fix the edges down in any way. So same thing, we're just gonna pull the strand out and the pieces come apart. So there you have it. 
If you like my YouTube videos, be sure to share them with your friends, give me a thumb up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and come back and watch some more. Happy swatching!